know your IS code provisions, a short lecture series on tall building code, that is IS 16700 2017. So in this short lecture, I will explain about the clause lateral drift, that is clause number 5.4. So tall buildings under the action of earthquake loads or wind loads, they tend to displace from their original position. Now, what are the code provisions to safeguard against this one, or lateral drift? So that we will discuss in this short lecture. Let me share my screen. Yeah, lateral drift. So before that, let us discuss about the definition which is given is in IS 1893, 2016. That is definition 4.21, that is story drift. So what is story drift? Story drift is defined something like this. It is the relative displacement between the floors above and or below the story under consideration. So, so if you look at say a building, so this is as an example, so this is one tall building. So what is uh, displacement and what is drift and what is drift ratio? So all these terms we'll first understand before going into the clause of lateral drift. So tall building under the action of lateral force, it can be wind or it can be earthquake, lateral force. So it deforms or it displaces. So this delta, I is the floor under consideration, delta I minus one, the floor below, delta I plus one, floor above, and delta N is the uh, roof displacement, okay? And HI is the floor height. Now, what is displacement? Displacement is simply displacement of ith floor, lateral displacement of ith floor. And what is drift? So drift here, you notice the symbol that is delta that is capital delta so uh, delta i that is ith floor is equal to small delta i minus small delta i minus one so this is diff drift okay. so drift means uh, floor under consideration the displacement of floor under consideration divided by the displacement of floor below that so that is drift now what is the meaning of drift ratio so drift ratio means drift divided by height of that floor. So in this case, delta I minus delta I minus one divided by that floor height. So these are the terms or definitions. Now let's go to the lateral uh, drift, which is clause number 5.4.1 as given in tall building code, that is IS 16700. So what code says is, <coughs> When design lateral forces are applied on the building, the maximum interstory elastic drift, that is delta max by H. So H is the floor height, delta max is that floor under consideration. The, uh, the delta max is the drift under consider, floor under consideration, that is that displaced floor, displacement of that floor minus displacement of the floor below. Okay. Now here it says it is under service loads. So what does this service load indicate? Service load indicate that the load factor should be treated as one. So that is dead load, live load, and uh, like either earthquake load or uh, wind load. So whatever load is under consideration, so that should be treated as one. That's why it is service load. Now let's look at that. What code says is under that, that is, which is estimated based on the sectional properties for serviceability loads uh, mentioned in 7.2 shall be limited to H by uh, 500. Okay, actually H by 500 is, H is the total height of the building divided by 500. Actually, this means it is the uh, total uh, displacement, total displacement of the building or roof displacement of the building should be restricted. Uh, by that, that means that is the amount, that is the value. So it should have been, it is one by 500 actually, one by 500, not H by 500. So let's look at that. Okay, 
Now, according to definition, what it says is delta max by H under service load or serviceability loads shall be limited to uh, one by 500. So let us assume that this structure has 20 floors, okay, even though it is I think, six or seven floors are shown in the uh, diagram, but let us assume that it is the building is of uh, having 20 floors and each floor has three meters height. The total building height is 60 meters. Now, what is delta i? Delta i is delta i minus delta i minus one. I'm just assuming it has to be just for, as an example, five millimeter displacement, five millimeter drift delta i. Now this drift ratio, that is interstory elastic drift ratio. So delta i minus delta i minus one is five millimeter divided by h floor height is three meters. So that value comes to be 0 0.00167. Then what code says is that should be uh, restricted or it should be limited to one by 500. So what is one by 500? One by 500 is 0 0.002. So it is definitely less than that. So 0 0.00167 is less than 0 0.002. So in terms of uh, displacement, in terms of drift actual value, how much it will be? What is the allowable drift, not the drift ratio? Allowable drift, if we convert that, say 0 0.002 multiplied by the floor height, so we'll get six millimeter. So whereas the drift is five millimeters, as an example I'm taking here, so allowable is six millimeters. Now, if it is say overall total, that is total height divided by five, and that is six, six uh, T meters. So 60 meters multiplied by 1000. So that is converted into millimeter divided by 500. That should be 120 millimeters. So the total and uh, the displacement of uh, the building is limited, should be limited to 120 millimeters. So this is one part of the clause. What is that? The elastic drift ratio delta max by H is limited to one by 500. So that is one case. Then coming to the second part. So what code says is, for single story, the drift limit may be relaxed to H by uh, HI by 400. So for single story. So now it, here it is not drift uh, ratio, it's a, it's a drift. So if we look at that, HI divided by, uh, sorry, it's 500, it's 400. HI divided by 400, not 500, just read it as 400. So 3000 divided by 400, it is 7.5 millimeters. In one floor, it is allowed. In one floor, this 7.5 millimeter, that means uh, that H, HI by 400 is allowed. Okay, now what is serviceability loads? So under wind, so serviceability load is the wind load with the 20 year return period is serviceability load. And also it says that uh, section properties. Okay, so which are estimated based on the sectional properties given in table number seven, section 7.2. So that is table number six, section 7.2 or class 7.2. Here you can see here, slab, beam, column uh, and walls. There are unfactored loads. For unfactored load, area and moment of inertia uh, values are given. For factored load, area and moment of inertia values are given. So unfactored load means, serviceability loads means we will take this, this uh, two column, that is unfactored load. Okay, design load means this will take the factored loads. Or ultimate load, sorry. Ultimate load means we'll take factored load and unfactored load means serviceability loads. And there's one, one more uh, uh, clause to this, one more point to this clause. That is for the design earthquake load, the drift shall be limited to HI by 250. So now HI by 250 means what? HI is the floor height that is 3000 mm, that is three meters, divided to 50, 12 millimeters. So for earthquake, uh, the displacement is limited to, uh, the drift is limited to 12 millimeters. And for uh, uh, wind, HI by 500, that is six millimeters, limited to six millimeters. And for one floor, uh, it can be relaxed to 7.5 millimeters. As you can clearly see in this one, the difference, for wind, displacement is severely restricted, or as a drift is severely restricted, whereas earthquake, 
some uh, relaxation is there it can go up to 12 mm so what is the reason behind it because wind design is a elastic design in earthquake uh, design it is a non linear so like we uh, take the advantage of the non linear that means uh, non linear capacity of the structure but whereas wind it is elastic design so we don't want sections to uh, members to fail or sections sections to crack so but uh, the actual uh, actual drift is as an example we have taken actual drift is 5 mm under wind it is uh, 6 mm and in one floor it is restricted or uh, relaxed up to 7.5 mm and for earthquake it is uh, 12 mm as an example i have taken so these numbers will change depending on the type of the building uh, and uh, height floor heights and other details when you do this example or the calculations so the intention of this uh, short lecture is to help uh, students and uh, practicing engineers particularly uh, budding practicing engineers to understand the is code provisions in a better manner so following references have been used in the preparation of these slides and i acknowledge the help of my students uh, in preparation of this lecture so thank you